Okay. Hi, everyone. So, title for today, February 4, 2022. Shorts are covering due to Amazon earnings surprises, but markets continue to be broken. So it's February 4, 2022. Thank you for watching Awesome 10X Investing Channel. Please share, like, and subscribe to your friends. This is a free Friday class. Let's begin. Okay, so we have a mixed bag for facts. We know that the European stock futures are higher because of stellar Amazon results. After hours, Amazon is actually 3,100, up 15%. Take note, though, that despite Amazon's earnings, 3.1 is still lower from where it peaked at about 3.8 or 3.5. So although this is a boost in sentiment, it doesn't actually change the fact that we still have a broken market. Also, I'd have to tweet this out for those who are new on Twitter. I have my Twitter account. It is at Faceless Trader. This is what I believe the market is at. We have the exact opposite of stability, which is volatility. You cannot sleep well at night because it doesn't work during volatile times. Even if you wish to own foundational names, say Facebook, aka Metaverse, it is easy to say that things long-term will be great, but earning or dropping 20% down in a single day if you were long is very worrisome. So a lot of people say that um, in bull markets, things are easy to sleep well at night. In bear markets, obviously, you can't sleep well at night with every single day. You, you want to know 40% drops on PayPal in a single day, 25% drops on Facebook in a single day, 20% drops on Spotify in a single day. What else? You've got a 30% drop on in a single day on, well, Square also followed with PayPal. You've got a 30% drop on Spotify and on Netflix. So yes, we've got a 60% jump move on Pinterest. Uh, Snapchat was 60% up after hours. Pinterest is up 30% after hours. These things are actually characteristics of a bear market. All these volatility, whip sauce here and there, it actually is a proof Further evidence that we are in a bear market, guys. Volatile times indeed induce three-day rallies, which gets fizzled out. We've seen that happen. January 29, February 1, February 2, we went up. And then January 30, 31, uh, sorry, 30, 31 was a Saturday, so there's none. But 31, Feb 1, Feb 2, we went up. Feb 2, midnight, we started falling down, fizzling out. Feb 3, Feb 4, we got some shorts. Tonight, some shorts will get squeezed depending on earnings formats, but is the downtrend intact? Will you, when you look at the charts, actually all the charts still point on the downside. So this is your NASDAQ. Um, you can see that the NASDAQ tried to rally starting February 2, you know, after a huge drop, right? You've got 14,000 rallying 10% up, 15,200 within a single day, covering up all those shorts, right? Within a single day. And then tonight, it's still going to be shorted. Now, despite the fact that Amazon's earnings are great, it could retest 15.2. And our, the argument is, obviously, you've got a mixed bag for facts. You've got a lot of drops with Facebook. A continuous Facebook drop will inspire more selling. Google actually got faded away at $3,000, $3,1. We've got Amazon tonight at $3,1. We expect some fade away moves. We expect actually Tesla to get faded away and um, Microsoft at 310, despite great numbers, is being faded away. Same case for semiconductors. Very good numbers for AMD, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, Silinx. What did the market do? After an initial 12% pop, it was actually taken profits from. So we can see the movements. Um, the following is a chart of the largest one-day valuation drops in the US stock market history since July 2018. When you see volatility as huge as these, Facebook dropping 23% in a single day, Apple during September 2020 dropping $180 billion, Microsoft, which was during the pandemic, dropped $180 billion. Of course, during March, almost everything was dropping. Um, September 2020 was also equally fierce. Tesla during November 2021 also had a big drop. You'll notice that the drops these days are huge because these are your mega caps. We do not think that the NASDAQ will hit all-time highs with these types of volatility, which makes us actually confident. And we're actually 
more inclined to buy a very cheap put option on the NASDAQ if the NASDAQ decides to go up tonight, say 100%, well, it's not going to go 100% up, right? Um, assuming that the put options in the NASDAQ 400, which is the QQQs, uh, you know, if it goes 370 or 400 strikes and you can enter a very cheap put option, to me, that is a very good risk reward. And the reward is really favored and advantageous for the bears. Okay, um, you also see in Bloomberg, Tesla is getting recalls. Last night, it was about 800,000 vehicles. And about tax breaks, it was rejected by India in another fresh blow. So we already know that the Biden administration has stopped subsidizing all the solars because obviously the government cannot afford to do more subsidies on the industry. Renewable energy got hit a lot. That was our signal for all these sun runs, sun power to go killed and get killed further. We are also seeing the same thing happen, not just in the US, but also in India. And we would actually see this globally as we believe that despite electric vehicle disruption, we actually have a call to actually be bearish and short the EV industry in general, not because we are bearish on the secular trend, but because from a valuation standpoint, it's very likely that in a high valuation um, industry, they will not be sustained because their earnings will come four years, five years, seven years. And despite Tesla doing very well on earnings, which was great. I mean, they've got two and a half billion EBITDA for the last quarter. We do believe that when you're trading at a trillion dollars, you cannot actually afford any earnings misses. It was good that Tesla didn't actually miss earnings, but you could expect that if they missed, it would have been as disastrous as what you've seen with Facebook missing the numbers. So um, look at this. The current tax structure of India is trying to support the local Tata Motors and the imported electric vehicles of Tesla will get an import duty of as much as 100%. If you are an Indian and you were supposed to buy Tata Motors or Tesla Motors and you were imposed a 100% import duty, that would eliminate a large market in India because of this. So yes, you could be very bullish on Tesla. There's great vehicles, engineering, but if the industry itself is not wanting, because example, if India wants to support their local, and we have seen this happen in China, guys, China, has been supportive of their own. That would be 1211. That would be Neo, XPEV, Li Auto, because they want the Chinese to support their own, not necessarily to support the US brands. And I would argue that even Japan would support their own, which is Toyota Motors. So what we're seeing here, guys, is that unlike the smartphone era, wherein Apple took the entire market share, it is possible that for Europe, you never know. They would support Daimler, which owns Mercedes-Benz, who also owns Porsche, Taycan. What I'm saying is that what people felt, which was the, the hegemony of Tesla is supposed to be the number one market share, reminiscent of what happened with Apple on the smartphone industry. It may or may not come true. We don't know the future. But with governments trying to support their own industries, Europe wants to support their own, they want to support their Daimlers. They want to support their Volkswagens. So you will have a lot of the companies trying to fight and becoming anti-Tesla, not because they hate Elon Musk, but because you know they just want to retain their jobs. So there's actually this tweet by Elon Musk, and this was actually highlighted in Times Square by Elon Musk fans asking the president of the USA, POTUS, which is Joe Biden, to also mention Tesla. And the truth of the matter is, POTUS, aka Joe Biden, has been supportive of GM and Ford because obviously they have a ton of competition versus Tesla. And what the POTUS believes upon is to create jobs instead of creating a hegemony for Tesla, which is already trading trillions of dollars versus say Ford and GM, which is just trading 50, $80 billion market caps. So in a way, whether you think this is politically driven, it has nothing to do with fundamentals, you have to understand how governments work worldwide. And to me, this is further blow for Tesla bulls that, hey, 
while you are very bullish, the world, aka the government officials, want to actually sell some of those Teslas at one two, one one, a thousand dollars. And if you're shorting 940, 930, the government is actually quite supportive of you, not supportive of the Tesla bulls. At least you just know the picture. Now, after hours, this is what happened last night. You could see that Meta platforms around after hours from 264, actually, Facebook dropped all the way further to close at 237. Now, even if Amazon does very well on tonight's numbers, what do you think would happen to Facebook? It's not going to be saved, guys. In fact, the perfect short setup is for Facebook to rally tonight and then the people who do not have any shorts on Facebook to actually implement 250, 260, 270, 280 put options on Facebook. Now, we got a squeeze because of the Facebook bad numbers. People thought, hey, is it true that the industry in itself is losing advertising and losing user growth? What we saw actually was that Meta, in fact, lost market share against TikTok and we saw actually user growth in Snapchat. So it's possible by next next week when we hear about Roblox numbers, is it possible that Facebook also lost the majority of the, uh, of the world's uh, kiddie base? I'd say the kiddie base, which is like 12-year-olds, 15-year-olds, or the tween age towards Roblox. Well, we would know that next next week. So what we're seeing here is that the hegemony or the monopoly of meta platforms is not worth the, the, the extra three, uh, you know, that's the reason why it had to shed $230 billion in the first place. If you are not as good as you claim, the US market will punish you like hell. And that's what happened to Facebook. Um, in my view, the shorts or the bears will keep on pounding the table on selling and selling more shares of Facebook I understand that the volatility will make some long-term investors nauseous, but bear markets are made of these. Bear markets are actually opportunistic times for both sides. If you get a good short entry at 265 or 275, you should take advantage. And where will you cover? My understanding is you just trail your stops. It's possible I took a look at the charts of Meta. The first support is somewhere near 190 to 210, which is 30% lower even from last price, 20 to 30% lower even from last price. Now for Pinterest and Snapchat, we took a look at the after hours moments. Um, this was what happened 6 p.m. AKA Fab2. Social media stocks crater after Facebook reports disappointing earnings. After hours, however, kaboom. Pinterest jumps more than 25% on earnings beat as these technology stocks are bouncing back. This is what you call a dead cat bounce. Now I understand Pinterest did not have to be sold off like Facebook. We can read about the numbers that their revenue growth is actually in the high teens in line with analyst expectations. So Pinterest did not actually grow as huge as you would think. But because the expectation of the market for the entire social media stocks was very bad, it allowed an expectation beat and it allowed a short covering to take place for Pinterest. For the people who are bearish on the social media stocks in general, you could actually implement buying a put option. I would say not yet. We will see how far it goes. Give it about a week or so or sometimes five days. And then we'll see whether it's actually a good short area as well. So I'm, I'm seeing that you want to still remain bearish, but you want to wait out how much the squeeze can take. Now, um, this is what happened after hours for social media stocks. Snapchat actually dropping from 25% rallied 62%. So from 80 bucks, it fell down to 24. It could rally to about 40 bucks, but it's still 50% down from its all-time high. And I don't expect Snapchat or Pinterest to hit anywhere on the all-time high move. These movements of the social media stocks are very typical bear market moves. Please remember, we are not in a bull market, guys. So... Every rally, tremendous 65% moves of Snapchat, no matter how good it is, you want to be actually looking at where it will stop. Is it 50 bucks? Is it 60 bucks? And when it gets primary on the setup there, 
that is when you punish all the bulls. Of course, you want to time this because this is not something that somebody who wants to sleep well at night can do. In a bear market, you do have to work for it, but the gains or the opportunities are also gargantuan. Snap shares rocket as much as 62% on the first ever quarterly net profit. Snapchat gained 30 million users in Q4, a user growth such as a 42% revenue drop and a first net profit. Okay, so that's what happened. Um, posting the first ever net profit, getting more users than expected, they averaged a 319 million daily active users. So they also topped all the earnings estimates, despite the fact they actually had a lower guidance, okay? So revenue increased to $1.3 billion. It was also the first time that they improved into a net income, positive $22 million on the bottom line, and adjusted EBITDA improved 97% to $300 million. This was a perfect setup for a short squeeze. The bulls saw this, and they actually used the very cheap price, which was Snapchat falling 80 to 24, which was 70% down from its peak, to actually be their opportunity to finally squeeze the bears and go up 50, 100% tonight. Doesn't matter. If you tell me that Snapchat trades at $48, I, who have no position at all to any of these earnings, might actually be tempted to follow the bears because no matter how good the numbers were for the quarter, it does not eliminate the fact that there are tremendous weakness in almost the entire market, not just the social media industry in general. Okay, um, let's take a look further. So. These were the numbers uh, on the strong earnings report. Um, the exaggerated move of Snapchat happened simply because of this. Even with the after hours jump to $39 per share, Snapchat is again still 50% down from its all time high of 83 bucks. So we know since last quarter, Snapchat was actually already having problems with their advertising because of the Apple policies. So let's just go through these numbers. 2021 was an exciting year for Snapchat. We made significant progress, CEO Steven Evan Spiegel said. The strength for core business enabled us to accelerate our investments in AR, augmented reality, the way that Snapchat community experiences the world through our camera. So echoing comments, Gorman said macro headwinds related to uh, supply chain disruptions remain unresolved despite all of this. Continued onboarding new advertisers, which drove our active advisor advertiser count to another all-time high. So execution was very good for Snapchat. What I see for Snapchat is going to be a trading range. You will not see Snapchat trade below 30 bucks, but it would not go past the 50 or 60 bucks area as well. So tonight, what's going to happen in Snapchat is the bulls and the bears will fight themselves over. The bulls have the control. Any price below 30 is theirs, but any price above 50 or 60 is still under control of the bears. What you have in Snapchat is a completely trading range environment. Also, Snapchat multi-year renewals with Disney, NBC Universal, via comms. These are returning new shows for Snapchat Discover. 25 different Snapchat Discover partners reach more than 50 million unique users globally, including UMG's Rebel Labs, Jungle Creations, and Team Whistle. So the market is very happy. And actually, this was the reason for the squeeze. So from 31, 27% up on the extended hours. I think when it opens tonight at 39 or $40, People who have call options on Snapchat will, number one, take profits. Number two, even if it continues higher, those who do not have any position on Snapchat would be tempted to also short it. I would prefer to short it near the 50 bucks arena, but I don't know if it will ever hit there. If Snapchat is able to hit 100% in a single day, I don't think anyone who is very long-term in nature will actually still say to themselves, hey, I'm long-term. 100% move in a single day will be taken advantage by a long-term investor and a short-term trader. Both will trigger take profit sense. So what is the trade to make for Snapchat? 
for Snapchat and Pinterest, which are both rising 60%, 30% after hours, what you want to do with the soaring after hours movement is to actually wait for a rally to get weak. When it gets weaker, wait it out, and then you actually want to make a short setup, despite the pleasing numbers, because we are in a bear market. Look at this as well. Pinterest said that its global monthly active users, strong metric, actually declined 6% year over year to 431 million users. During the quarter, monthly active users even declined 12% in US to 86 million. Average revenue rose 23% in the quarter to $1.93 per global user. Now, you might say Pinterest, despite these slower revenues, in fact, declining monthly active users, why did the company go up 25% in the first place? It's because Pinterest had fallen sharply before the earnings. So it was like a, uh, an odds game. Pinterest was dropping 10% because of Facebook. There was negative bearish bias on both Pinterest and Snapchat. But once the numbers came out and it was not as bad as expected, that's what catalyzed this short squeeze move. This is what a perfect short squeeze happens when you make a stock fall 70 to 80% down and then end up with not so bad numbers. This, they, these numbers are not super great like Google. These numbers are just okay. Okay lang yan. But because of tremendous sell-offs, it enabled that massive squeeze instead. Pinterest share price recovered all the losses, even adding gains for the market close on Thursday and a bullish report from competitor Snap. Take note as well. This week, we saw Robinhood had the worst earnings possible. And yet, a day after, Robinhood went from $10 to $14 or a 40% move. Now, you might say, hey, why did that happen if you've got the, the, the weakest earnings possible? It's because all the shorts use that very bad news to be the reason for them to cover. And en masse, when they were covering, everyone who also saw that piled up on the short squeezing move. That's why in a bear market, sometimes you will be confused. A very bad report can inspire 20, 30, 40% moves as if it was massively shorted. Now, at the same time, if the entire world was very bullish on Facebook, thinking that the Oculus VR headsets were great, and then suddenly a $10 billion loss on the virtual reality labs, it makes them think twice, as well as the first ever user growth decline on Facebook meta earnings, which prompted that 23% drop. What happened there was changes on expectations. They were very bullish on Facebook to begin with. And because that bullishness was not warranted, that precipitated the huge sell-off. By the way, the huge sell-off on Facebook should actually inspire more bears that if tonight's rally on Amazon is going to hit the SPY or the QQQs upwards, it's going to give the bears more ammunition for cheaper put options tonight. Now, let's take a look as well. To me, Snapchat at 39 is quite high. But if Snapchat, let's say, gives up some gains, you know, you never know. Maybe there's a profit taking. I would buy Snapchat 34 to 30 bucks and trade it upward until it hits 45 to 55 dollars with a stop loss at 30 bucks. I can also go long Snapchat call options at 34 strike with a three to four limit for one month expiry if I could go long. Take note though, if the aftermarket is already 40 bucks, I will not participate on any long trade here. In fact, at 40 to 50, I would now participate on the short trade. So it's more of a trading range on Snapchat. Um, this is Snapchat. What happened last night was just simply recovery of this gap down. So this was actually a gap down here on earnings, additional gap down here. 83 all the way to 24. It rallied to 39, but 40 bucks is actually just break even on a six month or one year basis. So Snapchat is not in a bullish phase. It's actually in a trading range phase, wherein the support is near 30 bucks and the resistance is near 50 to 60 bucks. 
Okay, let's take a look on this Facebook meta platforms. We already see that massive $100 drop, the largest drop in Facebook's history ever since 2018, Cambridge Analytica scandal, and so forth. So nowadays, Facebook drop has nothing to do with the scandals, whether it's the Instagram suicides of the teenagers or those political congressional problems. The bigger problem now of meta platforms is the user growth decline. So with that, um, what we could see clearly is that the first support of meta platforms lies 202 until 140 bucks. Because the support is still 15% lower, the argument here is that the risk reward still is given to the bears. The bears have not finished punishing meta platforms. People in the US or even people all over the world likes to ask me, hey, is it time to buy Facebook? The answer is that when a certain data metric changes, you have to think of what the opinion changes into. Yes, the business model of Facebook will continue to grow despite that user growth decline, but it allows you to actually buy it near the 2018 to 2020 arena with a range low, which are with a range low, guys, of about 150 and a range high of 200 bucks. In case you want to buy Facebook as your foundational platform, could you wait at $200 below? My answer is wait it out. Now, what happens if Facebook rallies to 280 bucks? I suggest to short Facebook at 260 to 280 dollars. How do you do that? Buying put options or shorting the shares yourself directly. Of course, you can also short meta platforms. How? Via owning the NASDAQ put options or via owning the inverse funds. Inverse funds like SQQQ, TECS, um, they all are largely exposed to these fangs. Therefore, a drop on Facebook, despite a growth in Amazon, will make a mixed bag for your spies and your QQQs. You will not see the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ hit all-time high if you've got, a mixed you've got a mixed bag on your fangs. You will not see it go up, up, and away, all-time highs, if some of them are broken. Your NASDAQ, will not go all-time high because Netflix failed, because Facebook failed, because even if Google tried to go all-time high, Google was also being sold down despite very good numbers. If there's only one fang that can lift the market up, yes, that would be Google. You don't need to own the NASDAQ. If you really want an all-time high move, all you got to do is wait out for Google to give you an entry price and you go long Google for your all-time high play, which means that the index is going to be a laggard versus, say, a Google. There will always be an outperformer, but it's not going to be meta. Now, AMD had very good numbers. We saw semiconductors as a whole were implementing outlook, raising guidance, saying that inflation was not a concern. Yes, we've got tremendous moves from Lisa Su, the AMD CEO, but what happened after hours? We actually saw a day after this $130 of AMD got quickly sold down to $120. Bucks. Here, it was faded away. The after hours move was sold down, taken profits from. You could see this is a direct downtrend from 160 to 150 to 140 to 130. If the best news possible couldn't even make AMD hit all-time highs, would you be scared if tonight's Amazon move will trigger AMD to go 130 or 140? The answer is no. Despite great numbers from AMD, it will not be enough to trigger the entire market to be bullish because you cannot have a few generals hit the sentiment to an all-time high. As I said, there's no sleep well at night in a bear market. Unfortunately, if you want to make money in a bear market, you do have to be number one, trail stops, very fast, very flexible, very nimble, and in fact, always managing your risk. Because the risk is if it has a bad number, you can just go down 25% or 40-50% in a single day. We're not talking about a year to lose 50%. We're talking about one single day, you can lose 50% of your money. And I don't think people can sleep well at night with that type of scenarios. Okay? Amazon.com, good numbers tonight, but take note. Amazon was hanging by a very thin thread. 
If it failed, this 2-8 would have got shot down all the way to 2-4 or 2-2, two, two, inspiring the bears to punish the market more and more. Unfortunately for the bears, or fortunately for the bears, it doesn't really matter. Yes, Amazon did well. You've got a rally here. But 3132 is actually just the support before, which is now resistance. 3732, we still have a lot of downtrend to contend with, even for Amazon. So I'm saying that the bears have the advantage here, no matter if Amazon had good earnings to speak of. So it's just going to be a range play for Amazon. That's what's going to happen. If you've got good numbers, Amazon will trade in a range with, with 2.8 as support and 3.5, 3.8 as resistance, maybe for an entire year. Maybe for until June, July, for the next earnings quarter again for Amazon, wherein Amazon has to continually beat and raise, continually beat and raise. If not, it will always fall down back to 3,000 or 2.8. So you see that the market has to get good numbers or else you get punished heavily and heavily. Now, Alphabet, aka Google, was the best in class amongst the fans reporting numbers, right? Last week, it was Apple, Microsoft doing well. Tesla actually managed to do well, but it was sold down simply because the valuations were extreme. I would argue Facebook had a very extreme, it's not extreme valuation, it's just really bad numbers. That's why it had to get sold down. As for Google, this 10% rise, yes, there was the 20 is to 1 stock split, which was making all the retail investors happy. They could finally buy Google at $150 because 3,000 is 150 if you divide it by 20. And this one is really the crux of the, 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 the YouTube. The YouTube was really the biggest mover of the earnings call of Alphabet, which means that YouTube has become the television for the entire generation for that and the power is stunning, wherein content created by YouTube, user-generated content was as big as $8.8 .8 billion revenue. What this proves is that there is a large revenue for video content, watching videos by people, whether it be for entertainment or news or something educational like stock market content nowadays, like me, which is on YouTube. Either way, um, what is showing is that the advertising business is heavily number one for Alphabet, aka YouTube if we're going to be very strict about this. So in fact, people are now assigning, in my view, at least $250 billion of additional weight on Google simply because of YouTube. Because the revenues was as big as $8.8 billion, $8 billion, larger than Netflix, which actually supported $7.7 .7 billion in a quarter without having to produce any highfalutin content. I mean, I don't even have a camera. I mean, my camera is like webcam. And I'm pretty sure the other users who are using their YouTube to, to, you know, to, to, to get uh, eyeballs. Obviously, I don't have eyeballs here. But I'm saying that there are YouTube viewers that gets 20 million views or 35 million views or 100 million views. Those, you know, the artists, the, the, the singers, the anyway, all of that. They, the celebrities and influentials. Um, that is really um, the primary target market of the advertisers, and they do have, um, they do want to advertise strictly on YouTube. So in a way, this tells you that um, it will be interesting if you ask me to see how all these advertising supported content can actually translate good numbers. Example, um, if if the TikTok generation really hits it off. Um, simply because Facebook indeed admitted defeat with TikTok, aka ByteDance. So there's really that uh, dilemma right now in the land of Facebook. Is Roblox eating their market share? We never know. We will have to learn in the next few weeks where Roblox is also going to report numbers. I'm of the view that Roblox took some market share away from Facebook. Um, this is Alphabet. Very strong moves last night. Tried to hit all-time highs. To me, though, in terms of the entire land of the NASDAQ era, only Google has the fastest probability to go all-time high. While the rest will slump in a range or probably go down further, only Google can actually hit all-time highs this year of 2022. So if you're strictly a bull 
you want to actually wait for Google to fall here to about 2.8, fill the gap at 2.8 or 2.6, and then go long the Google. How do you go long? Simply by buying Google shares. Um, anyway, you will afford Google next time because $2.6 or $2.8 is going to be $140. So yeah, I, I would assume that people will buy Google call options because of the 20 is to 1 stock split, the very good numbers. Should you buy Google? And my answer is yes. Um, if you could buy Google at 2.8, 2.9, it's a little bit pricey. It's a little bit pricey. You might want to wait 2.7. I'm not very sure if you can get it low, but you can try. I mean, I am not aware if you can buy Google low, but I will not deter you if that is something that you want to do in your portfolio because I would assume that with a market sell-off on Facebook, most of those sellers will generate some of their cash outflows to become cash inflows for Google. There will be huge rotation here in my view. They would, example, if I was a fund manager strictly trading the fans, I think that a majority of them would go 25% increase weight on Google and then reduce 25% more weight from Facebook. So you will see momentum keep selling FB and keep buying Google. I think that's going to happen. And do you want to trade that momentum play? My answer is yes. So long Google, long Google calls and short, uh, long Google calls and long FB put options if you know trading options. Okay. Um, okay, so Tesla is getting hit, yun nga, the, the subsidies, the vehicle uh, government related stuff, basically. So we are seeing Tesla actually have these downturn, downturns, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1K, yesterday, 9.30. It could rally tonight simply because Amazon halo effect. But I'd say that if it rallies Tesla to about 9.40, 9.60, you still have the bears to contend with. Again, the chart will, will not lie. We can see that this is a downtrend, this is a downtrend, this is a downtrend. But of course, it has a lot of supports as well. Tesla's got a ton of support at 840. Tesla's got a lot of buyers at 800 and 760. So what I see with Tesla is it, it could be a possible sideways trading range move. It's not as detrimental as a Facebook downtrend move. But Tesla is not also in up, up, and away land. This is not like the Google wherein we go up, up, and away. Let's go $5,000, boom. It's not like that. It's not like that. We have to be honest here. The charts are telling you the truth. Okay, um, Microsoft, is this going to be an up, up, and away land? Unfortunately, I think that Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard is going to let the, some of those cash flows become a little bit hazy in the next few quarters. And so what the market actually did was they sold off Microsoft after the numbers, right? So we can see this was very clear. 340 dropped to 280. It rallied to 310, but then again, it dropped again at 300. But Microsoft is not a sell-off that is panic selling. What you can clearly see in Microsoft is that this is just healthy profit taking, a normal pullback. And obviously what people know is that Satya Nadella has become one of the best transition CEOs uh, of all time, right? Of all time. Um, judging from the format, he managed to make a 200, 300, $200 billion company to $2 trillion and beyond with the Microsoft Azure, with all those uh, Microsoft LinkedIn, all of those acquisitions, um, and so forth. No, So I'd say that the Activision Blizzard is the attack of Microsoft on the metaverse, and it's a very good attack for the next five years. Sony got so... Um, so Sony was very scared about that move of Microsoft. And I know that in the fan group, Yes, um, many people will add more weight to Microsoft and Google after that earnings call. So what would happen is, let's assume I have $100 each for FB, Google, Amazon, Apple, la la la. What they'll do is just simply, okay, get rid, exit all of my FB. In fact, short, short, short. You know how US do, does this. Short, all FB, they'll do that. And don't worry about it. That's typical. They'll kill FB all the way if they want to. Any rallies of FB will be sold, sold, sold. And then they will just keep on buying Google, Microsoft. Yeah, we know that play. That's going to happen in the next one day, next two days, next week. You could expect that to happen, which, which will make your S&P 500 and the NASDAQ to trade in a range. 
it will have a selling pressure here and a buying pressure here. Because obviously, no matter how much you want to kill a name, it can't like fall 50% in one day either. I mean, if it does, obviously, some people would say, wait up, wait up. FB at 200, I'm a buyer. You know, there are going to be those bargain hunters. At the same time, if they're going to push all the way for Google at 3.2, 3.3, there will also be sellers thinking, hey, I like the numbers, but at 3.3, I'm okay to take some profits off. So what you're really seeing is really sideways movements on the NASDAQ. It will give advantages for the bulls and the bears if you know the trading ranges, which is quite big because this is a volatile world. This is the world of Volatility, not stability. Can you make money on volatility? Definitely. Um, so last night, this was also what's happening with Spotify. Spotify actually fell all the way down, I think 25%. 25% after hours, it could get killed further. And uh, you've got the controversies with the Joe Rogan moves, and you've got these total premium subscribers not doing as well. So what we're seeing here is that Companies, there are some companies getting killed left and right. Would you feel okay to go long this market if in a single day of sleeping down, sleeping and doing nothing, and you were not hiding in cash, if you had Spotify, is it okay that your $200 became $160 overnight? I'm sure you wouldn't say okay. In fact, Spotify is going to go 145 or 136. Now, I'm not saying that it will fall tonight again and again and again, but this downtrend is happening all the way since November. You just lost half of your entire capital if you were just doing nothing and holding Spotify all the way. Now, this is what I'm saying. People want to say, I want to buy and hold and sleep well at night. Well, we are not in a bull market. You either have to admit to yourself that we are in a bear market and you got to hide in cash if you don't want to lose half of your money within two months or so forth, or you just want to stay chill and, well, slowly your portfolio is dying 50% in three months just because you're trying to chill. I don't know if you're going to chill with that type of movement. My answer to almost all of our Awesome TEDx members is either you hide in cash and stay risk-free in cash and expose yourself with the right amount of market exposure and market knowledge, knowing that we are not in a bear, we're not in a bull market. And you cannot tell me that I'll just cost average Spotify because five years from now, Spotify is going to go back to 300 bucks for 100 bucks. I do not know what's going to happen in five years. I know that Spotify has 180, 200 million subscribers. That's great paid subscribers, but that doesn't actually change the fact that you would lose 50% in three months in the process, and that is not a good thing to sleep well at night too. Now, this is NVIDIA. Very good numbers, by the way. We've seen AMD, Silinx, NVIDIA, Qualcomm shoot all-time highs when it comes to record earnings, but what has the market been doing with record earnings? We have been seeing fade away hard way. We are seeing a lot of fadeaway layups in the market. In fact, NVIDIA rallied as high as 260 only to get punished down to about $240. Tonight, it could rally 250 to 60 But do you think the bears are going to get shaken out? Are they going to go Taylor Swift, shake it, shake it off? No, no, no. What you can clearly see here is 340 320 290 280 260 This is a very clear Lower high, lower high, lower high. No matter how good the earnings were, it's just giving the put options extra cushion to short NVIDIA more. I.e., hello, we are not in a bull market. You have to see what the charts are telling you. Whether you think this is manipulated or whatsoever, either you follow the charts or you lose your money. Do you want to lose money? Well, forget the charts. If you want to make money, though, you got to look at what's in front of you. What you see is really a downtrend, and your bullish stance has to follow whether the trend is your friend. And the trend is not your friend here. Now, that said, should you think that NVIDIA is going to fall 160, 180, 150, and so forth? I think that, in a way, because there's very good numbers on the semiconductors, there will be people who will hide here. 
Of course, some fund managers cannot go to cash and then short, cash and then short. Not all fund managers can do that. And so some fund managers will try to hide all their money in the good numbers. So they'll try to hide in semiconductors, they'll try to hide in Googles and the FAMs, trying and the Microsofts, trying to avoid a cataclysm of drops of 25% a single day. That's what they're trying to avoid. What you can see here is that they're not trying to make money. They're just trying to avoid losing money. That is what bear markets are for. Obviously, if I think, hey, it's a bear market, if every company's 99% chances to lose down and lose more, of course, I have a 99% to make money just going inverse. Henceforth, in fact, in Awesome to the Next Land, January proved to be one of the one of my most profitable months. And we've been telling Awesome to the Next, hey, this is a bear market. If you want to make money, find an opportunity to short because shortlandia is like very wonderful. Make money shorting in a bear market. Ta-da. Okay, so um, let's take a look at beats. So we saw Snapchat beat, Pinterest beat, Unity software beats because of revenue of up 43%. Now you've heard on and on again, people are saying, oh, the growth stocks have been growing, blah, 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 but they're not earning money. Did Unity earn money? Actually, they didn't. But because Unity was sold down, punished from 180 to 90 bucks or 50% down, it was able to rally 15% up in a single day, aka short squeeze. Let's go through this. Unity announced a full year 2021 financial result. They guided a range of 34% revenue growth in 2022, up 44%, exceeding guidance. Now, the revenue of $300 million is ahead of guidance, and they had a full year revenue of $1.1 billion as a software firm. So if you know all the mobile game developers, obviously they're using Unity, $1.1 billion. They're trading today at 27 times price to sales, 25 to 27 times. Press the sales. Um, Unity strong fourth quarter and full year results are driven by exceptional execution. Um, I have no problem. I love the company. I really love Unity. But you can argue that do I love the company of, or do I love making money? And, and between the two things, I do want to make money and not the company. It's very clear that you could see that these squeezes are just part and parcel of a bear market. Obviously, um, when you have earnings risk, it could go upside and it could go downside, which is why I avoid as much as possible to do any individual earnings related things. In fact, I love how one of our members did a long strangle call and put option for these types of earnings events. If you know the strangle command, okay, so not all people are aware of options, but we taught this in Awesome 10X class during Christmas. We said that you could actually just go long the volatility. If you buy an out of the money put option on Unity at 80 bucks, and if you buy an out of the money call option on Unity, say 90 bucks, basically as long as Unity explodes 90 above, or if Unity explodes downside 80 below, you are gonna make money simply because of the explosion of the premiums of the options. One of them is going to die, obviously, because either the put option dies or the call option dies. In this case, because of the exaggerated volatility, Unity shoots up with 15% moves. Those call options print money. The put options expire to zero. Now, if the call options rally 100 200% further, that means that it pays off the entire loss of the put option, netting you a profitable money, money mucho. That's how you make the money in the strangle move. That's really uh, perfectly employed by one of our members, and congrats to that. So um, he did that for Unity, Snapchat, Pinterest. Very good execution, by the way. For, 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 for bear market environments, that is a perfect play. If the premiums in both the calls and puts are very low to begin with, let's say I can buy a put option at $5, and let's say I can buy a call option at $5, so I'm paying like a 10% volatility move for either side, either call or put. If it's very cheap, I don't know if he bought like very cheap volatility. Either way, because the explosion of the move was like 30% after hours for Pinterest, 60% moves on, on Snapchat after hours, obviously that paid off 10x move. Uh, I don't need to really see how much he paid for the option. 
I can already compute in my head what happened there in those auctions, simply because the intrinsic value would have shot up very, very much if you are doing an expiry event of Feb 4, which is very normal because the cheapest calls and put options happen when? In a expiry date, which is February 4 to 9, right? So very good execution because super cheap on the time decay. So the out of the money puts and calls would be very cheap. So you would have risked something like $300 for $100 to make something like $1,000. For me, a risk reward of that is something that I would gladly applaud whatever consequence happens. So very good execution. I actually liked one of the trades of one of our clients, uh, members who did uh, an out of the money call option on Google. He raised three thousand dollars and ended up winning twenty thousand dollars. Massive good execution because he employed our. I really love how some of our members are able to really handle the options. I'm happy that there are members who are learning and earning from the options because, understandably, um, you know, as a teacher, I like students to really know and execute on their own and not wait for me to tell them what to do. It, it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm saying, na, oh, if you don't know, the ba, parang, I, I look down on you. That's not true. I, I, look, I, I look up to everyone, but I think that siguro there are some people who are more, um, more confident, maybe because they've already been trading longer than the rest, and the rest are just beginners. They're just new. They're very... And I actually love the fact that those who are beginners do not attempt to do it until you practice it. Because at the end of the day, money is on the line. Every $1,000 matters. In a call option, you could die $500 within a day or you make a $5,000 call option on a Google and then you're dead if you're wrong. Right? So, so I, I mean, I understand the risks. Kaya you can do it practice account, right? So anyway, um, look at this. Losses for Unity clocked in at $144 million dollars. This was actually an 80% loss increase from the $80 million that Unity lost in fourth quarter because these increased losses were primarily driven by a stock-based compensation expense. Actually, to be fair, Unity is not making money yet. Okay, so I was actually surprised given that the high growth stocks like Unity was also squeezed simply because of revenue growth. Because if you follow the narrative of every bear, they always said that high growth stocks that don't earn money should be shorted to the brink of to the brink of end of the world, you know. So um, this only proves to me that okay, this was a squeeze, and then eventually the shorts will pummel unity down again and again. Okay, so anyway, this is uh, Richie Tallo, CEO provides a good execution for the quarter. So um, the bulls are happy for a day, maybe they'll be happy for five days, and then it gets fizzled out. Um, but let's just go through the best numbers in the Unity highlights. Unity expanded addressable market through strategic acquisitions. We know this because they've, re they've reported this last year. Parsec, Sync Sketch, basically you can create video games anywhere around the world because that's remote. Um, collaboration with cloud-based technologies. They also um, added Weta, which was uh, the owner and the maker of Lord of the Rings, interactive data visualization, Ziva Dynamics. Basically, as a company, Unity is heading more and more into the production of high, um, high quality production of anything, whether it be video games, films, uh, 3D rendering of your visuals, whether it's for architecture and so forth. That's why I love Unity as a business. Take note though, if Unity falls somewhere in the zone of about $70, $80, or even $40, $50, I would be the happiest person in the world to buy Unity in a bear market price. So um, I'm just really trying to buy it at the lowest price I could. And to me, if it's a bear market, punish it first so that I could buy it 40, 50% lower. So in a way, medyo sadista rin ako. Okay, Unity's Operate Solutions continue to command attention. Operate Solutions contributes to the stability and success of more than 200,000 games. 
Unit, use of Unity's monetization service is now driving 2 billion net new installs and across platform, multiplayer games become more mainstream. Multiplayer VBOX offerings continue to grow, supported by some of the best launches, including Amazon's New World Splitgate by 1047 Games. To me, guys, when I want to play the metaverse, I don't really play it via index funds. If I like Unity and I like Roblox, eventually I'll buy them at cheapest price I could within the year today or next year or next next year. Do I forget the fact that they are secular winners? No, no, no. I know they are. But I'm trying my best to get them at the cheapest price possible. Can't I try to get it 70% lower if I wanted to? I'll try my best. A bear market allows me to get that. Unity's great solutions accelerated throughout the year. Great solutions experience a strong year across games and non-gaming. In late 2021, AAA publishers launched more games with Unity, including Riot's League of Legends, The Ruined King. So they have been expanding market share with the top 1,000 mobile games in 2021. And outside of gaming, they've been getting more customers across industries, whether it be Hyundai Motors, they've been factories, they've been building digital twins. So we know that they are a play with the Omniverse because, you know, uh, NVIDIA partnered with this Mercedes-Benz, right, for the factories. But Unity was the one chosen by Hyundai Motors for the digital twins of their factories eBay partnered with Unity to, to enable sellers to showcase actual items they're selling in Unity's interactive 360 view. In fact, I'd say that Matterport has to contend with a potential competition with Unity. Right now, Matterport's doing virtual reality with a lot of real estate as a niche platform. Could it be possible that Matterport will have to contend with Unity as a competition someday? You never know, guys. But I'd go for Unity over Matterport any day. Um, take note though, here's the thing. Um, when bears are right, put options play a huge role as well. If you're bearish, Spotify dropped 20%. That means kaboom on the options, on the put options on Spotify. PayPal got clobbered a lot. That actually inspired Square to fall 30, 40%. If Square, by the way, which we'll report around Feb 14, 15, I think next week, um, you could go long strangle for Square because um, what if PayPal does what Snapchat did? Uh, sorry, what if Square does what Snapchat did, right? Because obviously, um, PayPal is like the Facebook to Snapchat. Square fell 30% ahead of earnings even before the earnings came out. It will take a small beat on Square to go 20% up on the day of income. How would you do it? You could do long call options, out of the money call options, and you go long out of the money put options. That way, you're just going to bet that volatility will exaggerate either 20% upside or 20% downside. I think that is the perfect play for the square numbers next, next week. Now, for Facebook, I think it's just a momentum play on the downside again. And... Um, Netflix was shorted by us when it rallied, diba? So it dropped and then it rallied. Bill Ackman trade triggered the setup and then kaboom, drop. Every rally of Netflix would be a perfect short setup for those pairs in town, like me. What I mean to say is the market's giving directions, big moves. You want to take advantage of those big rallies to do what? Short the rally, sell the rip. You have to be trained to do what in a bear market? Sell strength. That's how you make money in a bear market. Long strangles is also a right way to attack earnings numbers for next week. It would be nice to do that for a firm in Square, in my view, because a firm in Square got killed with PayPal. It could do the Snapchat Pinterest move next week. Um, I would do a long strangle on both of them. Magrarambulan yung bears and bulls on those kinds of names, in my view. So I'm also going to be going long strangles on Roblox. So I do believe, comment ko lang to, Roblox is really where the real user growth is. If people want to go for the real moves of Facebook moves, kung saan dumipat, I'm bullish on Roblox. So we'll see, mga one month to, uh, one week to two week expiry on Roblox calls, magla lottery move ako sa Roblox. Um, let's take a look what's happening on crypto space as well. Um, okay, what you saw here is big drops and then big pops. But overall, really, crypto is in a downtrend. So short squeezes are normal in a bear market. Um, I'd, I'd wait for that rally to keep on going higher. 
you've got a catalyst next two weeks. I think Feb 24 is the earnings of Coinbase. Silvergate had a bad number, by the way. So if Silvergate went $130, you know what to do. Short the hell out of it. Um, well, hindi ko memorize lahat ng numbers. Pero I'll tell you what. Silvergate and Coinbase, nasa, nasa shortlist kita. Rally to about 220 for Coinbase, it's a short. Rally for Silvergate to about 230. Uh, 130, it's a short for me. Um, it's normal. I've been seeing this normal stuff, no? Uh, the shorts won a lot last night. This is just a one-day move because Amazon had tremendous good earnings. Some people on a Friday want to take, wanted to take profit. Di ba kasi like, nag-short ka Monday, Tuesday, I don't know when they shorted, right? Kahit kagabi lang, let's say, nag-short sila. Um, some would have covered kasi right now, pwede ka talaga mag-literally mag-day trade eh. Kasi, you know, let's say, nag-short ka lang too simple. We, we were trying to short too simple, by the way, at as, as high as 36 to 39. If you remember, I was giving a short call on too simple because I was bearish the EVs, uh, EVs, mga self-driving, not just the Rivians, but also the TSPs. Okay, so what's happening right now is that, totoo naman, piesta lagi yung bear. Piesta ng piesta. In the bear market, syempre, you expect the bears to have a feast. And then the bulls will be famine. Um, Minsan-minsan lang the bulls are getting their love. no. So what's happening is dahil nag-Amazon good numbers, the bulls want to fight. Kaya nagkakaroon ng, sige, laban tayo habang bullish pa si Amazon. So what you're seeing today in the after hours market is that the bulls are trying to um, buy and then the shorts are getting triggered to either take profit or cover their shorts. I'd say that you know, depende naman yan sa saan ba presyo mo na nag-short. Kasi if you are near the highs, hindi ka dapat matakot. All I'm saying is that if you are shorting on an overcrowded name, wag ka nang mag-short, late ka na. But I would use any rallies tonight to actually initiate a put option on the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. I'm very classic, simple lang ako mag-isip. Spies, the Nasdaq, those are the easy setups for me. And as well as next week, as I said, Peloton is Feb 8. I will not short it. Why? Because Peloton is a crowded short. Everyone already knows that Jonathan Foley has been massively losing on execution. Kaya from 100 bucks, it already is 20 bucks. 80% down na yan. Sure, it can go 10 bucks or 30 bucks. At that level, I don't care. I will not do anything. Whether it goes up or goes down, it's none of my problem. What I think is beautiful though is a firm. This one, I might go strangle play here. To me though, sige, the fundamentalist in me believes that since, v since Visa and MasterCard did well, it tells me that credit is king. In the US, it's not cash is king. Mahilig mag-borrow money ang mga USA eh. So if they love to borrow money, either nag-borrow sila sa Visa MasterCard, nangyari yon sa earnings reports ng Visa, and I'd say that nag-borrow yan sa Affirm, buy now, pay later companies. So we will see, but I think Affirm is a play. Uh, baka mag-massive bear market squeeze si Affirm come earnings date. The way Pinterest and Snapchat did a move. So medyo kung magbe-bet ako dyan, pwede. Um, si Roblox, I'm also thinking na if Unity was bought simply for user growth, kung hindi naman pala importante ang cash flows, akala ko ba importante mga earnings and dividends, guys? Last few months, sinasabi ng mga bears na cash flow is king. Eh, wala namang cash flow si Roblox, wala namang cash flow si Unity, kaya napaisip ako na, okay, sige, kung ganun yung labanan, edi sige, sell it all down kasi wala namang cash flow yan for now. For an entire year, Roblox will not earn money, but it will continue to grow. 80%, 100%. Kung, kung ganun lang naman ang consensus na barometer sa Roblox, if Roblox will trade at $60 or $40, $50 before earnings on Feb 15, my bet is that beat yan. Bullish beat yan. Now, kung gusto mo maging loto move, loto move dyan, mag out of the money call option tayo sa Affirm and Roblox. Sorry na lang kung mali. Anyway, ang out of the money call option, if I lose $500, they, I lose $500. Okay lang naman yun, as long as I accept my risk. Um, Shopify is Feb 16. The market is already bearish on Shopify. Kaya nga yung Amazon, binair move yan. Tapos boom, nag-squeeze si Amazon. I think that the market will be in for a surprise on Shopify as well. Maglo long strangles tayo dyan. Square, the market is very bearish on Square. Kaya these four names, Affirm, Roblox, Shopify, and Square, Feb 10, Feb 15, Feb 16, Feb 24, these four companies in my view, very interesting surprises.
magkakaroon ng surprise. People will act surprised. Pero syempre tayo, if we're watching the market all day, we should not be in for a surprise. Mag-long strangles ka sa Affirm, Roblox, Shopify, Square. How is a long strangle at play? Long out of the money calls, long out of the money puts, try to get a nearby range, and then kaboom if the volatility happens. Of course, I'm going to teach this to Awesome Tanex members straight up on what I'll execute for these four on those dates. Pero I think um, malaki yung upside surprise the more that it gets punished. Kasi magiging cheaper yung mga puts and calls niyan eh. Ito si Pinterest, kaya yan nag-30%. Uh, Take note, 90. Binagsakan mo muna ng 24. Guys, kapag binabagsakan ka ng 80% down, napakabilis to beat expectations. Yun lang naman yun. Snapshot drop from 85 to 24. Good news, good earnings. Kaya nag-60% drop. Ah, nag-60% up, I mean. Okay, um, Starbucks had very bad numbers. So medyo napatingin ako. We know that Starbucks IPO competition was Dutch Bros. Okay, I'll be very clear. I don't like Dutch Bros. $70, I laughed at the $10 billion valuation. At $54, which is $8 billion, I still laugh at the valuation of Dutch Brothers. Of course, people would say, Nikki, wala namang funda-funda, di ba? Okay, beautiful nga eh. The fact na walang funda-funda and it's a bear market, these things should follow the downtrend. $77, $60, $50, $54, it looks like there's some hesitation here. Watch this stock if it can rally. Kasi in my view, this is a good short play. Of course, there will be some squeezing to go come March. Baka, we'll see. Pero I'm more on the put option side on Dutch Brothers. Tingnan mo kung buy put option mo sa 60 or 65 yan. In the money puts, make it na lang ng March or April or May expiry. But I'm more of a bear on Dutch Bros. Lumabas na rin kasi yung mga Starbucks Inflation is eating their uh, profits. They lower their guidance. So, coffee to coffee, parang nangyari kay PayPal and Square. Gulat nga ako ba't hindi nag-down si Dutch Brothers on the fact na masama na si Starbucks numbers. ba? Parang Coke and Pepsi lang naman yan, ba? Okay. Next. Okay, there's also crypto regulation. For the people who are still on the edge on why they should be very careful on Coinbase, Lalabas na earnings plus SEC chair is on a crypto regulation. Meme stocks like GME and AMC are not going to get their time of day in 2022. We have a bearish view that all these memes, yes, si Dwak nagtratry and to fight fight, but eventually it will get their own repercussion. You don't want to short them individually if you want to really be bearish on the meme stocks. There is what you call the round hill meme ETF, which will just short it all for you, aka ticker symbol MEME, meme which has been falling down all the way. Um, 16, 14, 12, 11, 10, ganon. Downtrend, yung memes. Now, um, I think that the crypto regulation would give you an entry point come Feb 25 at our earnings ng Coinbase, Feb 23 pa, basta end of the month. Watch out for an uh, out of the money uh, put option that you could play on Coinbase. Pag nag-220 to 250 dollars yan. Um, ah, sorry, hindi pala out of the money yon. In the money put option ba yun? Or sa, oh, okay lang yun. In the money put option would be fine. Earnings near Feb 23, I think is gonna be as horrible as Robin Hood. So it depends where. No? Kasi si Robin Hood, bad numbers, nasa 10. Nagkaroon ng squeeze. Uh, so kailangan mo pa rin tingnan, asan si Coinbase before the earnings? Uh, my view is that Binance has the bulk of the market share. Kaya medyo bearish siya kay Coinbase. Traditional assets have also offered crypto. We know this. Si Square, si PayPal, Interactive Brokers, Charles Schwab, even the banks like JP Morgan, which says that Bitcoin is rat poison. And they didn't say that. But, you know, J Jamie Dimon is not a believer. But, of course, JP Morgan clients are. And so they offer custodian um, abilities for their clients who want to own crypto. So, yeah, And also, there's nothing... So surprising na nag nft si Coinbase because it's available in OpenSea. So Lana-based tokens is also available in FTX, di ba? So Solana sa own exchange, FTX. So to me, parang the premiums is not really validated for Coinbase. Yun lang naman. I think it would be fully revalued over and over again. And additional regulation will also mean that Coinbase will have a higher number of shorts. Any rally near 200 to 220, I'd say buy a put option for Coinbase. Ayun lang, um, it's already 6.30. I'm happy that you listened and let's 
ingat na lang and um, as usual, if you are free, please try to remember the exact opposite of stability is volatility. If 2020 was easy money, make money while sleeping, indeed, in 2022, you snooze, you lose. Ganun kabilis. You can lose if you just snooze. Does that mean that you have to be awake all night? Well, if you're not going to be awake all night, you better make sure you've got trail stops. Trail stops, put stops, stop loss, bracket orders. 2022 is going to be a tough year. But I want to tell all Awesome 10X members, you want to be tougher because you don't ask for easy markets. You just ask yourself to be more strong, stronger and you accept the challenge. And if you do, lalagyan mo lang naman ng trail stops yan. Um, in a way, hindi naman sa pagmamayabang, but year to date, very good move. 225%. How's this possible in a very difficult market? Hindi ka dapat talaga natutulog. AKA, always looking at what the markets are giving, the opportunities given. Okay, mukha naman patay pala yung mga shorts. O, tingnan mo. Kala nila the Amazon bull will save them. Uh-uh. Nasdaq futures going down. Of course, I am bearish. You could see that I have some success call options. I've got some SQQQ, which is an inverse. I've got Netflix short, AMD short, Tesla short, fast calls. These are all inverse funds. Siyempre, may stop loss tayo dyan and may trail stops tayo. And you can see that money can be made in a bear market. It's really just opening your eyes to the opportunities and not saying, Oh no, it's a bear market. I don't have money to make. Hala, you can. It's a bear market. It means you need to learn how to short. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye.